Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Zidic Alex, and today we got two huge pieces of news for Marvel Future Fight. The third sneak peek and a surprise dev note. So this video is going to be packed with information. I'm going to try to get through it as fast as possible. But for those of you who follow me on Twitter, and if you don't follow me on Twitter, you're missing a lot of memes and, and gems. No, I did not cut my hair bald. That was a filter. Anywho, let's check out the third sneak peek. So we come back to the familiar volcano. We see the very cool Phoenix. It starts to get closer. It's looking really dope. And then what's going on here? Uh oh, boom. We get a little explosion and we see someone rise up from the volcano. I've been sneezing once per video for the past like five videos. Anywho, taking a look a little bit closer at the sneak peek, you will see if you go frame by frame into the explosion that the explosion reveals T3. So whoever this sneak peek is about is getting a T3 enhancement, a tier three upgrade. And if we go a little bit slower here, when we see this person coming out of the shadows, they look bulky, they look big, they look kind of like Henry Cavill's Superman. Who could it be? None other than the Hyperion. So let's check out what it says here over the on the forums. The forums really lays it bare. The Squadron Supreme will not be left out in the fight for the power of the Phoenix. This leading superhero of Squadron Supreme has joined the tournament. For those of you guys that don't know, Squadron Supreme is a group of... Sometimes they're heroes, sometimes they're villains. And, you know, on some level they function similar to, like, the Avengers and other groups. And they are led, almost in every iteration, the Squadron Supreme is led by Hyperion. Power Beyond Measure. He's very strong. If you guys don't know, he goes toe to toe with Blue Marvel, who is one of the most, one of the strongest cosmic, uh, cosmically powered champions, I guess that you could say in, in the in the Marvel universe. Very very strong, criminally underpowered in Marvel Future Fight, I should say. Check out the new look and power of this superhero, whose nuclear powers, Hyperion have exploded with the touch of the Phoenix Force. We will announce more information through the October update details. So this is the sneak peek. Normally I would spend the remaining 10 minutes of this video or nine minutes of this video just talking about Hyperion. Hyperion does need a top to bottom rework. And we're finally going to say goodbye to this ugly uh, cell shaded uniform. I'm sorry, devs. This was a failed experiment three or four years ago. I can't remember. I remember where I was when they announced these uniforms. But uh, I don't remember how long ago it was now exactly. So we'll we'll finally say goodbye to this cell shaded uniform. And as far as Hyperion goes, he's going to be getting a brand new uniform. They said brand new look and power. So he's going to be getting a tier three. So my advice for you, if you don't already have him, if you have him, let's say, you know, at four star, five star is get him to six stars and get him to tier two so that you can unlock his potential so that you have that option available to you. Remember, he's an Eternal now, and he has the leadership tag, so he's going to take advantage of all of White Fox's buffs. That's huge. And he's got a self-buffing leadership to the tune of 45% for all allies. That's huge. However, he could get even stronger because, like I said, Hyperion is supposed to be an absolute god. Um, he's not, but he's supposed to be. On top of the fact, if you don't have Hyperion, let me just go level that up here. If you don't have Hyperion at all, you can technically get him for free, although it is going to cost you gold and energy and possibly your sanity. He is in this support character. Why is my remaining support count at zero? Huh. Well, whatever. Uh, you can't. Oh, I think because I already ran my missions for today. Hmm. Anyways, you can refresh this and you can look for Hyperion Bios. Keep in mind, because they slash the number of bios needed by half, you don't need 10 bios anymore. You'll need five. So five bios, and then slap a mega rank up ticket on him. Uh, at that point, I would say don't do that, right? If you don't have Hyperion at all, and you don't have the resources, like if you're free to play, I would say just get the five bios and unlock him, and then wait and see how wait, wait to see how good his uniform in tier three is. And if my review and beast modes review, etc., are very, very good, then you can consider throwing a mega tier two uh, and a, a, a mega rank up and a mega tier two ticket at him uh, to then to then get that uniform and, and get that tier three. So that's a sneak peek. I'm very excited for Hyperion. He has been bad for a very long time and he's a premium character 
like Carnage. He was one of the original premium characters, so he honestly deserves way better than he's gotten. So this is a perfect selection for this update. This is this is exactly the kind of character you want to be reworked. Not only are they bad, but they've also been very, very expensive for a long time. So players who have invested in him have felt like they haven't gotten a return on their investment. Maybe we're finally going to get a return on our investment for the original Superman clone. Now, that being said, there's a lot more information to get to. Surprise, surprise. Marvel Future Fight stays winning, baby. Did you know, by the way, you are playing the number one Marvel mobile game on Earth? Yeah, that's how I felt reading this because I was like, man, the game's pretty good. There's no need for an apology or, or a dev note. And yet here we are, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. So very, very cool here. October update development team, letter of appreciation. Awesome. Despite these hard times brought about by the recent crises, the pandemic and stuff like that, we have tried our best to capture the joys of Marvel in our beloved game and are listening to your feedback across the spectrum. We send our appreciation and apologies through this letter. Cool. Okay. The Marvel Future Fight development team will continue to do our best to present attractive features of Marvel. You're doing a good job. We are sending this letter today to introduce some changes like timeline survival, stuff like that, including instinct. So instinct was the new sort of feature and, and sort of stat uh, that was included in the last update, which has been a point of curiosity since the September update. I got cat hairs on my microphone. So we hope this letter will help, help agents prepare for future battles. So instinct and artifact. Artifacts can now amplify instinct that can amplify instinct will be added. So the, the way that I've understood this, artifacts seem to be like CTPs. I'm not saying they're CTPs in the sense of being as rare or as expensive as CTPs, but they are a new type of gear that can amplify the characteristics of a hero and add a new ability based on instinct. So because you equip it on a singular character, it's like uh, a CTP, but you could also compare it to Uru or ISO because it is going on a singular character. So it's unclear how many different artifacts you will be able to put on a character. If you can put, let's say six artifacts, up to six artifacts on a character, maybe for the six infinity stones, then it would be more like Uru. I mean, I'm sorry, it would be more like ISO because you can equip up to eight ISO, right? If you can put, you know, 15 or 20 artifacts on one character, it's more like Uru. If you can only put one artifact on a character, it's more like uh, a CTP or an obelisk. And in my opinion, I'm just guessing here, I'm speculating, but the higher the number of artifacts you can equip, the lower the, the, the individual power level of each artifact is going to be. Kind of makes sense, right? If you can only equip one artifact, then the power level is going to have to be pretty similar to CTPs to get people interested and to get people actually trying to, to farm them and buy them, right? You don't want to give someone the ability to equip one thing and it's like one Uru. Oh, whoop de doo I got 90, I got plus 90 energy attack. It doesn't make any sense, right? So it's it's either a lot with a, with a small individual value or it's one with a large individual value. That's, that's my take on uh, how it's going to work, but it's unclear how many artifacts you could equip on each character. But yeah, my guess would be it's like a CTP. I just don't want people to panic and be like, oh my God, they're introducing new CTPs. Free to plays are gonna get milked. Well, free to plays can't get milked because they don't spend any money. Anyways, th don't worry about it. <laughs> we are aware that a lot of our agents feel burdened with growing instinct and have gone through numerous discussions to prepare various places for acquisition and the feature to transfer the level of artifacts. So this is really cool. Not only the way that they word it, not only are you going to be able to uh, uh, find artifacts, but you'll be able to level up the artifacts. So it, it, be, it would be very, very cool if the artifact will level up when it's equipped on a character and you use that character in combat. That would be very, very cool. Alternatively, they're going to give like a secondary uh, resource, you know, like an artifact fuel, let's say, and then you would burn that artifact fuel uh, and pump it into your artifact to level up said artifact. For example, I don't know what they're going to do, but those are probably the two main ways in which we uh, level up the artifacts. But it's really cool that they're already thinking ahead. So this is this is really good communication. To me, this kind of feels like it, in case th those of you guys want a comparison, you're a little bit confused right now. This sort of feels like a combination of introducing CTPs and introducing CTP reforging at the same time, but on a much smaller power scale, at least from what I can tell, right? I don't think that artifacts are going to overtake or replace CTPs because we still don't have all of the reforged CTPs and the CTPs still make the devs a lot, like still make the game a lot of money. 
So my guess would be artifacts are not going to be on the same power level as CTPs. Like CTPs are going to be here. Artifacts are going to be here. But in the sense that uh, artifacts are going to be something that you not only grind for to get, but you also do some sort of enhancing on, which is different than CTPs if you don't do reforging, right? If you don't reforge, once you get a CTP, you just slap it on the character and go, right? Even once you reforge it, if you reforge it and get lucky with the roll, you just you just go. Right, you slap your knee and you go. Uh, there's no, there's no second step. There's no ongoing maintenance or upgrades. To be honest, there's really no ongoing maintenance or upgrades for anything in this game. Uh, well, not anything, but, but for most equipments besides uniforms. For uniforms, you need to keep grinding XP if you don't have the XP chips, right? So it's kind of like a mixture between a CTP and a uniform, in my opinion, with the XP that you can get uh, and leveling up the artifacts. Anywho, artifacts can now. I digress. Artifacts can now be acquired from, well, not can now, but after the update, will be acquired from the story mode and timeline survival. I think these are two really good places to put them for two reasons. One, timeline survival is open to all players, and we know that the first two or three difficulties are also open to almost all players, right? The third difficulty is very, very easy. They're going to be introducing more difficulties, difficulty four, five, and six. So that's really good they're going to be doubling the number of difficulties but we know like it's not like the third difficulty for now was impossible to begin with right but the story mode is also really good because again there's two difficulties there's normal mode and there's extreme or ultimate mode or whatever so there's there's a lot of good you know if, if, they, if they put the the artifacts in like world boss legend or you know uh, alliance conquest or something like that it would be or alliance conquest like top 100 uh, it would be it would exclude a lot of players. So it's really good that they're spreading out these rewards across game modes instead of concentrating them all in the same one or two game modes. We also reduce the gap between agents by allowing additional artifacts uh, that can be acquired from the store if needed for free or with crystals and gold. So I don't know if this reduces the gap between agents. Wink, wink. Uh, this is this is obviously a way for them to monetize artifacts more. Right, because right now if they just have them drop here, they can't monetize them. So they want to monetize artifacts. Again, I'm not gonna really gonna comment on that. Every game is gonna want to make money with every new piece of content they introduce because the content is free otherwise. So they're gonna have that option available. But I believe this is the best case scenario because not only do they mention free, but they also mention gold. They don't they don't just mention crystals. So that's what sort of honestly this is very well written. And this honestly leads me to believe that they've thought this through very, very well. They don't want the way that I read this. They don't want a repeat of last year's reaction to the CTP reforging. You know what I'm saying? And if you were there for that, you know exactly what I mean. And props to you for sticking with the channel for so long. Uh, OK, let's keep going. Uh, also, to alleviate difficulties, the enhanced level of artifacts. So like leveling up art, your artifacts that has already been enhanced and equipped can be transferred to a newly equipped artifact aside from removing the gear by unequipping. So the way that I understand this, and I could be wrong, there's gonna be two ways that you can use an artifact that's already equipped on a character. You can either uh, you can either unequip the artifact, which is probably gonna cost crystals, because that's how it works in Marvel Future Fight if you wanna unequip something. You can either unequip the artifact and then equip it on another character, or let's say you find a, an artifact that's better suited Right? Like, let's say you have an artifact on Hyperion that gives him more HP. I'm just saying randomly. And then you find another artifact that gives him more HP if he's an Eternal. Like, it's just the artifact just says, you know, plus, plus 20 HP, which is the same as the old artifact. But then it adds another 10% HP if, he, if they have the uh, Eternal's ability tags. So you're like, dang, I want to give this. This is 10% more HP, right? It's a 50% it's a increase in HP for my Hyperion. I want this new artifact. Oh, but I... I spent all that time and all those resources leveling up my old artifact to level five. So all you can do now is you can take what like what they said in the in the thing, right? You can transfer. You can transfer the levels on your old artifact to the newly equipped artifact. So you can you can transfer some of your progress and you're not going to lose 100 percent of the progress on the existing artifact to the new artifact again. That sounds pretty good. Hopefully that'll be a free process. That's not going to cost you gold or crystals, but we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, that's the new item that's coming to the game. The new resource coming to the game. I don't know if it's an item or a resource. Should be an item, not a resource. Sorry. New item coming to the game. Uh, artifact. And then we have timeline survival. 
So first of all, we'd like to thank you all for playing Timeline Survival and providing various tips and feedback through the community event. Based on your suggestions, here are some of the changes that are going to be made on battle difficulties, effectiveness of hidden features, and temporal energy, which is what you use in addition to energy and boost points in Timeline Survival. So they're adding threat levels, like I said, four, five, and six, which is really good. So they're doubling the number of incursions or threat levels in uh, Timeline Survival. These are harder and they're designed to require more tactics in selecting heroes. So you're probably gonna have to be very careful when you select. There's probably gonna be some stages that require you to bring characters that have, let's say like Chaos Magic, like Scarlet Witch, or characters that are mutants specifically, or that are tier three or transcended or something like that. So that'll be really, really cool. And I'll be excited to, to jump into that and see, see what's good. In addition, the maximum number of temporal energy will be increased. So we're gonna get we're gonna get an increase of uh, from five for the max temporal energy, which is excellent. And the recovery period will be decreased. So you're gonna recover because I think before it was one hour for every temporal energy. They're gonna decrease that. So you're gonna gain back temporal energy faster to reduce frustration and allow agents to explore the timeline for a longer time. These are excellent, excellent changes alone. But there's more. Artifacts will now be the main reward in Timeline Survival. So you're definitely, definitely going to want to play Timeline Survival. Go back and watch my old video on it. If you want sort of a, a refresher, I can link it in the card above. Uh, and otherwise, you know, keep it locked on the channel for more content about the upcoming Timeline Survival. And they can be acquired as daily rewards and stage clear rewards. So again, this, this is what makes me feel like the power level for artifacts is not going to be as high as CTPs. So don't panic. Don't get all afraid that this is some crazy power creep that's going to, you know, create this huge gap between you and whales uh, because they don't give away CTPs as daily rewards when they introduce them. You know what I'm saying? They don't even give away CTPs as daily rewards now. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, you could say that technically they're daily rewards in GBR, but no, I don't think that they're I don't think that they would word it like that and then put a 0.00001% chance. Some people in the comments are going to be that cynical, but I've kind of moved on from that attitude. Lastly, the hidden features, the little question marks and stuff like that have been improved so that buffs will appear more often to help out with battles. So that doesn't mean they're taking away the, the negative uh, effects that can trigger from the question mark squares. They're just saying that they're going to be less frequent because the, 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 the buffs that appear in the because the question marks can be buffs or they can be nerfs like they can hurt your characters or help your characters but they're going to sort of balance it out so that the buffs appear more often maybe it's going to be a risk worth taking to step on those question marks now please continue sharing your opinions on timeline survival as we actively monitor and consider them so this is one of the new timeline survival uh maps called land of fire i think that looks dope i'm excited other information, instinct and CTP reforging steel effect. So with the introduction of instinct, we noticed that the effect of steel from the CTP of authority reforging uh, has been weaker than intended. So they're going to improve the steel effect to apply to instinct damage as well. So if you have a uh, if you have mighty or brilliant authorities and they have the steel effect, this is a big win for you. They're going to get stronger. Congratulations. We apologize for inconvenience regarding this issue and we'll take various features into account for our agents to complete compete pleasantly. So this is good that they're rebalancing the CTP reforging because it's important, right? We we need we're going to need eventually a rebalancing for this the the CTP of refinement, the egg, the CTP of destruction and possibly transcendence and patience. So it's good that they're looking into this kind of stuff. Uh, growth material items. This is another really good thing. People are probably listening to the artifact thing and they're panicking like these artifacts are going to take up all this space in my inventory. Oh, no. Uh, so here we go. To prevent the inventory from being overloaded with the addition of artifacts, a feature to convert some items to growth materials will be added. So a growth material is something in your inventory. I'll just paraphrase what they said. A growth material is something in your inventory that can be stacked on itself. That's how it's worded in Marvel Future Fight. So the hidden ticket is a growth material because it stacks on itself. You have 31 hidden tickets, but you don't they don't take up 31 spots, right? On the other hand, rank up material, it does stack like each bio of itself stacks, but the bios in general don't stack because they, they hate us. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it doesn't stack, but it, it doesn't stack. I mean, it would be kind of weird if it stacked on the one hand because you couldn't tell how many bios you had of which character, but yeah. So basically what they're going to be doing 
is they're going to be turning some items into stackable items we don't know which items are going to become stackable but some of them are going to become stackable so yeah they're going to turn some of these items somewhere into into stackable items maybe they're going to uh make all iso have the exact same stat that'd be cool to be honest and then have them be stackable i don't know but yeah so growth material items are are materials that can be stacked in your inventory and are expected to help secure more inventory space so it's going to alleviate some of the inventory issues for you and then we have a new epic quest new epic quest ladies and gentlemen yeah we are preparing a new epic quest for those of you that called it i didn't think so i was like y'all are crazy there's no way they're doing an epic quest for the eternals i was 100 percent wrong we are preparing a new epic quest in celebration of the upcoming marvel studios the eternals so this is one of the pieces of artwork in game for one of the zones that i guess you're going to visit during the epic quest and in my uh to, to the best of my memory and my knowledge this is one of the castles that we see the eternals visit very early on in their journey when they come to earth minor spoilers here if you've seen the trailer which hard to miss by now but the eternals have been on earth for a long time seven thousand years or something like that and so when they first arrive on earth and they're they're talking to people you see uh angelina jolie's character and you see um the one that runs really fast sprite or whatever you see them inside like inside the castle in the courtyard and this is the castle that they're in so sort of sort of so yeah that should be very very exciting we are devoting ourselves to deliver the stories of these eternal heroes so please look forward to future updates we only have two eternals in the game right now besides hyperion the october update is going through tests for satisfaction of our agents Please look forward to the upcoming update with the enormous power of the Phoenix that were revealed in the last sneak peek. So there you go. There you have it, guys. Bravo to the devs. Keep doing what you're doing. Go further. Go beyond. I think this I think this uh, dev note is awesome. And I am very happy to know and to have confirmation that I'm still playing the number one Marvel mobile game on Earth right now. So, yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you're happy to see a dev note out of the blue, Smash the like button and I will see you in the next one. Take care.